Okay, so this video is to supplement the lessons learned in AVAM 3103 rigging. So you guys are going to be doing your P2 projects, which are going to be rigging a primary flight control system. And a lot of students tend to overcomplicate the system by overthinking uh, how the control system works. And it might be sometimes a good idea to kind of draw it out draw a little diagram of how the cables flow through the system, how the control moves the flight control surface. And in reality, the primary flight control system that's not hydraulics and doesn't have any autopilot system is a really, really simple um, system. So we've got a little picture here of a simple flight control system. We can see we've got a control stick and some of your aircraft may have a yoke versus a stick. Okay. And then we have an elevator as our primary flight control surface. And then the components in between that take the inputs from the pilots and transition them to movement on the elevator. So the pilot, if you look at the picture, he's just going to be moving the control stick fore and aft. Okay, And the control stick is connected to a push-pull tube here. And the push-pull tube is connected to the pulley. So as this push-pull tube slides or moves back and forth, it's going to cause the pulley to rotate, which is going to cause the cables here to move another pulley at the back of the aircraft. And connected to that pulley is another push-pull tube. And then that push-pull tube is connected to a bell crank, which is connected to the elevator. Okay. So there's three things that you have to do, you have to set to get a flight control and rig. Okay, And the first thing you need to do is when the control stick is in neutral or no control input, okay, the control surface should be typically at zero degrees okay, or no deflection. And how we define the control surface being a no deflection, if it's the elevator, you can think of the cord. So just imagine this is the cord of the elevator. The cord of the elevator is in line with the cord of the horizontal stabilizer. That's your neutral point or zero. Now, when your flight control system is at neutral, your yoke is in the neutral position, right? No control input. And your elevator is at the zero degree position, your cables should be tensioned. Okay? So, how you get this neutral, you're either going to lock the control stick in the neutral position, either using a couple of pieces of wood and some C clamps or a rigging pin that gets inserted in the system, or you're going to lock the elevator. At the neutral position okay typically though the the control is going to be locked in the neutral position so let's just assume we installed a rigging pin here okay so we've got this rigging pin we've installed and that is locking the control stick in the neutral or no elevator input position so now when the control stick is locked in this neutral position the goal is to get our elevator to be at the neutral position, zero degrees, with our cables tensioned. Okay. Now, cables, they can only pull, they can't push. Now, if you find that once you've tensioned your cables, you've connected everything, you've tensioned your cables, and you've got your control stick or control surface, depending on the aircraft and the system you're rigging, we've got our control stick locked in neutral, if we find that our elevator, instead of being at the zero degrees, say, say we're slightly down, maybe 1.5 degrees, okay? What that tells you is one of the cables is longer than the other, okay? So when you initially installed the turnbuckles and tensioned them, one of the cables is longer than the other. So you have to, when you connect 
the turnbuckles, okay, you got to tension them at the same time. So start them both about the same time. AC4313 says a minimum four threads engaged on each end of each turnbuckle, okay. Have your control stick or control surface locked in the neutral position. Have yourself or your partner, you're going to be down in, in, the, uh, in the tail section or in the wing, depending on, on what you're working on. You're going to tension or turn your turnbuckles so that when you finally get your cables into tension, the elevator or control surface is going to be at zero degrees or neutral, no input. Okay. So that's how you get your neutral. Once your neutral is done, getting your deflection up and down is easy. You just adjust the primary stops. Okay. So the primary stops, they're going to limit your deflection. It's a hard mechanical stop. The bell crank, when this elevator goes up, it's going to contact against the primary stop here. And the bell crank, when the elevator goes down, it's going to contact against this primary stop. These stops are adjustable. So suppose your range is, um, let's just call it 15 degrees up and 20 degrees down. And I'm just pulling numbers out of the air here. 20 degrees down. Okay. And we find when we check our deflection, we've got 14 degrees up and we've got 19 degrees down. Okay. So we need to adjust our deflection. We will do that by adjusting our primary stops until we get the deflection we need or the deflection that is required. Now be careful because some aircraft, not all, but some will have the secondary stop. And you want to be sure that you are hitting the primaries first, right? So the primaries are going to limit your control surface deflection. And if you have secondaries, and I don't think any of our aircraft do have secondaries um, that you're working on, but they might. We want to hit the secondary stops after the primary, okay? And remember, the secondaries are just there to prevent damage if the primary should fail, okay? And that's it. You're rigged. Now, you can in some instances, and this will be specified in the maintenance manual, you can fine-tune the neutral, okay? So suppose your tension is good, right? And you're almost at zero degrees. You're like 0 0.05. You're like half a degree. While some manuals might say you can adjust the length of this control tube, be either lengthening it, okay, or by shortening it to get your deflection, okay? But the first thing you have to set when you're rigging, first step, setting your neutral. And your neutral is, good, is dictated by the control stick or the control surface being locked in position. And you adjusting the tension and the length of the cables so that the component that isn't locked is in neutral position along with the component it is. Okay. Adjust your stops, disconnect your lock, safety your turnbuckles and everything else. You're finished. It's really that simple. Um, and what, what happens a lot of times is the students will kind of jump around and try different things without really understanding the system. If you don't understand how your particular control system is working, okay, um, stop and figure it out. Do a quick drawing. Understand what it, what adjustments are going to happen when you adjust certain things and what you need to do to get it into rig. But this diagram here is a pretty pretty much simple example of all the aircraft you guys are going to be working on in the in the shop at BCIT. Okay. Now a little tip. Okay. Be careful with your turnbuckles when you lock wire them because sometimes lock wiring them, you can cause them to turn a little bit and it might only take half a turn for you to lose some of your tension. So always make sure after you finish lock wiring your turnbuckles that you check the tension again just in case because the ICC guys are going to check it and um, if they find an issue, they're going to make you redo it. Okay, And if Mr. Prakash and I find it, and ICC guys, and you guys miss it, it's going to be about a three mark hit for airworthiness. Okay, so hopefully this helps simplify a little bit doing the rigging. And again, if you have any questions, Mr. Prakash, I are available as long as you've read the manual. Okay, good luck with your P2s.